Hi everybody, it's Cindy of Cycle Design Lab. Today I'm in my basement and I've been saving a lot of big pieces of cardboard. We have some boxes that we get things shipped in and I've been saving all the cardboard because I'm going to do what I call cardboard carpentry to finish off this wall. We did some remodeling years ago in our basement and somehow this room never quite got finished so I'm going to see what I can do with some cardboard. So to start this project, I've made a very rough sketch of my design. And my plan is to have some little shelves in between the 2x4s here. And these circles represent some pieces that I'm going to cut to hold some empty tin cans that I can store pencils and other art supplies in. And then down here at the bottom I'm going to have some space for tall, skinny items like rolled wrapping paper. So I want to be able to use as big a pieces of cardboard as I can, but I need to make sure that they are, I have a place to nail them, so I want to make sure that they match up to my 2x4s. So I've done some measurements at the top of my wall here, and I'm ready to start cutting some of my pieces of cardboard. So as I go along, I will do some more measurements once I have pieces in, until I have my whole wall filled. So there are a lot of different tools you can use for cutting cardboard. Um, you can use a utility knife or an X-Acto knife, and if you do that for the straight cuts, you probably want to also use a metal ruler. Um, I also use scissors for some of the shorter pieces, uh, and, but my two favorite tools are actually kitchen knives. So this is just a paring knife with uh, serrated edges, so you want, you want to be able to kind of use it like a saw, so you don't want to use a smooth blade knife. And then this is a grapefruit knife that I really like to use for cutting curves. The, the blade is a little bit curved, so it helps you do the curves. And then it's also got teeth on both sides, which makes it easy to use. And it also has a nice comfortable handle. So this is actually my favorite tool for cutting cardboard. So I just wanted to quickly show you how I use some of these cutting tools. I've marked a couple of lines on this piece of cardboard and for trimming lines that are really close to the edge I probably would just use my scissors. So for these two outside pieces or lines I would probably just cut those with the scissors. But once you get in, inside the cardboard it gets a little harder to work with. So for straight lines like I said you can use this paring knife and you just kind of get it started like you're sawing. And then it's pretty easy just to control. If you want to, you can place it on the edge of a table. And the cutting goes a little bit faster. But you can see I'm just letting the knife do most of the work. Now once you get to the end, you do want to be careful. You can use the knife to cut the rest of it, but sometimes it's just safer to finish off the end with the scissors. So these are the pieces that are going to hold my tin cans, and I just used the can and traced around it to make this template shape. But it's kind of tricky to cut curves with the straight paring knife. So I'm just going to demo how to cut a circle or a curve shape with this grapefruit knife. You do have to be a little careful because I kind of tend to hold it down low, especially when I'm starting. And you don't want to cut your fingers, but you can see it just kind of goes all the way through the cardboard, cutting on both sides. And once you're through, You can go ahead and just make your way around the circle. You can hold it up on the handle, but I don't have quite as much control. And since my fingers are underneath, I like to be careful.
So you can use any tool you like to cut, but these are the two uh, tools that I like to use when I'm cutting corrugated cardboard. Alright, so I've finished cutting most of my pieces and I've just kind of dry fit them onto the wall using some thumbtacks to hold them in place. I'm showing you a little closer view of more of the detailed part of the wall. Above and below it's just going to be sort of flat pieces. But I wanted to put a couple shelves in and um, also I have these little scalloped spots to hold some tin cans to put pencils and other art supplies in. So uh, one note on the cans, you want to just be sure you have a safety can opener so that you don't have the sharp edges on the, on the can itself. And it's the kind of opener that just kind of lets you put the lid back on and it kind of stays on top. So um, I also used a lot of flat cardboard pieces to cut most of it, but because the 2x4s have a nice 12-inch uh, spacing, the lids to the reams of paper that you can buy um, are also 12 inches wide, so I've just kind of cut this lid down and it has saved me, you know, doing a lot of extra cutting to make the shelf and then fill in the sides. Um, and it's pretty much the, the depth of the 2x4 as well. I did do a little trimming on some of them. So um, I'm going to finish up cutting a few more pieces. I want to hide this cord right here um, and make another shelf. You can see here where I have uh, the switch plate uh, facing cut out there. And if the next step after I've finished cutting all of my cardboard pieces, I'm going to go ahead and do some paper mache on all of the pieces. So to make my paper mache, I'm starting with a couple of old books. You can see uh, this one's kind of a little yellower than this one. And I'm just going to do a little bit of coffee dye on them to try to age the pages a little bit more. So to do that, I'm, I'm using about 20 sheets of paper at a time and I have a little container here with my today's coffee grounds and I'm just going to put my paper in there and I'm just I have a little bit of boiling water that I'm going to pour through the coffee grounds slowly just enough to cover my paper and then I'm going to let it sit for about a half an hour and then I'll take the paper out of the water and let it dry. So I'm just going to set that aside. And once your paper's dry, you have some kind of crinkly, a little more yellowish type of paper. So I'm just going to tear up my pages pretty randomly and in fairly large pieces and then I want to mix the two shades together because they're not exactly the same color and I may have to add another book so I just want to kind of have the colors, the two different shades mixed together. So to do the paper mache I'm going to start with a few of my small pieces. I'm going to be using the uh, gloss finish on the Mod Podge and I have a little bit of water here as well just to water things down if I need to. So I'm just going to start with one of my pieces of cardboard, apply some of the Mod Podge and I'm not too worried about getting right up to the edges because I'm going to have to go back and finish the edges after the pieces are actually nailed in place. So I'm just going to work here and flying my paper kind of interchanging the two shades as best I can. Alright, so there's my first piece. I'm going to let it dry and then it will be ready to nail up and I have about, I don't know, 20 or 30 more pieces to go. 
So I finished paper mache on all of my cardboard pieces and I'm ready to go ahead and try to attach them to the wall. So I bought some uh, inch and a quarter roofing nails. I think they may end up being a little too long and I may want to get some shorter ones. Uh, and in some cases, I think I might need to use these liquid nails to get all the cardboard attached to the wall. All right, so here's the wall with all of the paper mache cardboard pieces attached. And I do need to go back in and kind of put in a few more nails, tap some nails in all the way, and cut a small, you know, a couple small cardboard pieces to fill in the gaps here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go back over all the seams and the nail holes and cover those with paper mache as well. So I'm about halfway finished with filling in the gaps and covering my nail holes. And I just wanted to stop and show you what uh, some of it looks like. Got a couple of shelves finished. And then the, the slots for my can holes, you can see in the back I have, it's actually three layers, about a quarter, three quarter, or half inch thick, uh, pieces of corrugated cardboard glued together and what they're used for is once you put the can in you want the bottom of the can to be underneath that strip so that it doesn't tip forward when you put weight in it. It's a little counterintuitive you'd think you'd want to put, I, you know, I kind of thought I would want to put something under the can but you really want to put it on top of the can so that it doesn't tip over when you put items in it. Down here, I haven't done that yet, so you can see how loose the can is. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish up. I got a few little pieces of cardboard that I need to fill in, and I need to paper mache over this shelf and keep working my way down to the bottom here. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but I've marked on the back here where I want to put my little bracing for the tin cans. So I just have three layers that I've glued together and now I'm going to attach it to the wall. To do this, I'm going to use just a little bit of Gorilla Glue and then I'm going to use hot glue. I like to use the combination just because the Gorilla Glue will hold it long term and the hot glue holds it initially so that it'll stay in place. Just kind of alternating where I'm putting the glue and then I'm going to line it up on my markings back here. Oops. It's a little tricky because you can't get your hands in there very well. And I'm just going to hold it for a couple minutes or seconds until the hot glue cools off and then I'll do a test can to make sure that it stays. So before I start paper macheing this area here and covering up my gaps, I want to fill in some of my pieces here. I need to cut a couple more pieces of cardboard and I'm just going to sort of loose fit them and then I may use the hot glue to hold them in place before I do the paper mache. Alright, so I've got my can in here testing out my little brace piece in the back and it's holding nice and tight. So, and I've filled in all of my little spaces with some extra pieces of cardboard and I'm ready to go ahead and complete this area with the Mod Podge.
So here's a shot of the finished wall. You can see I need a couple more tin cans. And I also need to decide what I'm going to do with the cans. I'm not sure if I want to paint them or if I'm just going to take the labels off and leave them. You'll have to find out in the next video. Which, by the way, is part two of this project. And I will link to that in the comment section below. But I'm going to be finishing off this project with some more cardboard trim, door frames, switch plates, and baseboard. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you enjoy crafting with recycled materials, I hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out my blog at www.upcycledesignlab.com, and also be sure to check the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos.